So today I thought I'd talk to you about Erasure. I don't know if some of you guys have probably heard about it, have worked with it, worked with text, removing text. So I thought I would go through and kind of talk about my own way of dealing with erasures. Uh, my second book, which I don't have, I think there's a copy on the table back there. I don't have a copy with me. That's not really necessary. Um, among other things, it contains an appendix, a section at the end that is comprised of erasures or ruins or ghosts of poems that appeared throughout the book. So I kind of had the book done, and I started reading a lot, kind of reading a lot about the Surrealists, and then Mary Rufel, and I kind of had the idea of like erasing my own poems, like obliterating like my own work. And I mean, in a way that's called editing, people would say, right? That's, way, <laughs> that's what it's kind of like, if you're chipping it down to, like the, to whatever level, it is, but I was just coming at it from like a more conceptual way, and I had I set the book up so that you know the main poems appeared in the main part of the book, and then I had this appendix section that had images from the the pictorial archive as well as the erasure. So it was kind of separate, and it, I wanted it to work as an appendix, as something that you could refer to rather than a part of the book, and. Like my goal was kind of like to simulate ruin as if like the poems that appeared earlier had you know, aged like 200 years and just kind of like rotted away to their core, and kind of like leaving their traces, kind of maybe developing a new narrative at times. So I'll read the original poem and then I'll read the erasure right after it and see if that helps in any way. This first one is called Illustrating the Theory of Twilight. And there's an epigraph from John Anderson. A twilight you do what you can, which is almost nothing. Down in the reeds farthest from God, where the vultures wash their feet, is where I slept the night the dogs found the wild boar, half dead from a cancer, and brought its head back to the yards. I could not take it from them. They were wild with its blood as if they had seen the one true vision of light that comes after an animal is slaughtered in its sickness. This is what I call the visible evidence of the soul, and do not try to convince me that God has his way with us. I once saw vultures living in a house, in the cupboards and the walls. I came upon them along a creek, a house abandoned for years, trees growing through its rooms, jars still on the pantry shelves. The smell of leaves long dead, and rot in the guts of its floors. Three vultures rose through the ruin, casual, lazy days in the intestines and in the spirit and the creek's own mind. How can I go back to my life with the gaze of those birds upon me? I refuse to say I saw God in their faces. The gauze of twilight around me told me this, and I believe it. The dogs were waiting at the creek edge, and I saw myself in their movements, and the way they waited on every turn of my wrist. Pity is not a word I would use, but what animal is this that cannot live without a man to tell it? Death is close, stay near, do not leave me, you are all I have. And the appendix version of this, and this is called Appendix the Theory. Reeds wash the night, the half-dead yards, as if light is its sickness. The visible God has vultures along the abandoned years, growing rooms on shelves of leaves. The ruin, the spirit, the mind. Say God of twilight and believe it. The waiting creak in every wrist. Pity cannot live near you. <laughs> 